What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're gonna to talk about the infamous Fan Center Relay. If you're an HVAC tech, you'll find these inside hydronic heating boilers. Today, we're gonna to demystify the terminals and the wiring of the Fan Center Relay. We're gonna talk about the R8285D, which you commonly see inside of hydronic heating boilers. Let's go. Have you ever wondered what that click is? when you have a call for heat on your hydronic boiler, well, it's coming from the thermostat relay, which is right here. And that click is coming from the thermostat relay on this 110 volt coil, allowing power to be transferred to the fan motor. And in our case, the circulator. Now, before we talk about the terminals on top of the transformer, and the relay and the wires that you see coming out of some of these terminals like R and C and G and Y, we need to talk about the wires underneath that are going to be connected to wiring on the opposite side in your junction box. Now, the fan center relay connects to a four by four junction box, and that's where all your splices on the line voltage should occur. You're gonna have four wires, you could have five wires if you have the A model. The A model, uh, the R8245A, allows for two-speed motors, uh, more common for we, that we see for hydronic heating boilers. Standard efficiency, we're talking about our, our 80, 82% efficient models. We're gonna have only a single speed, which will be indicative of the yellow wire. Now, these two wires right here, if you notice the opposite side is our 110 volt to 24 volt primary to secondary transformer. This is the primary control wiring. We have our line and we have our neutral. The line is gonna to go to our incoming voltage, which is our 110, 120 volt, and the white is going, going, to, is going to go to our neutral. Now, on the opposite side, underneath our thermostat really, and the harness that it connects to, we're gonna have two wires. We're gonna have a black wire, which is going to get our primary wire, which is gonna get line, that's gonna to go to the black, and our yellow is going to go to our circulator. This is, this is when the thermostat relay is energized with a call for heat across R and G, that click is that, ther that coil on the thermostat relay energizing our yellow wire. So to recap, this is quite self-explanatory, it's separate. This can get a little confusing, but the black wire and the black wire goes together to our line voltage. And the white wire is our neutral. That's going to get connected to our neutral and the neutral from our circulator. And the yellow wire is going to go to our line voltage for the circulator. I like to explain what we have here so you can have a better understanding of the order operation. This is a single pole light switch, like you see, you know, in any room or for the boiler. This is our incoming voltage. This is that fan center relay with the thermostat relay and the transformer. We have a thermostat. Now, granted, this is from the 1920s, but still a thermostat and it's still functional. We have an automatic vent damper that you see on top of standing pilot and intermittent pilot. You know, those 80 percenter, um, cast iron boilers. And of course, our gas valve with um, bowl valves and nipples and uh, barb connections so we can read pressure. So just get this out of your mind for right now. Let's just focus our attention on our fan center relay, the incoming power, and some of the wiring here, which I'm about to explain every single terminal so you have a better understanding of what this is and how it works. So let's talk about what these components do and how they operate. The upper part, this metallic, bronzish, color looking box, that is our primary secondary transformer. It receives, this particular model receives 110, 120 volts and puts out a secondary voltage between the terminals R and C of 24 volts. So what that means is with the power switch on, and 110, 120 volts feeding our transformer across terminals R and C, we're gonna have a voltage reading of 
24 volts AC. We're taking a fluke multimeter between R and C, and we have 27 volts. Your voltage may slightly differ, but on normally you see between 26 and 28 volts uh, based in, uh, on our power supply. So right now we have 27 volts, also known as 24 volts across terminals R and C. So the, the transformer is energized and it's putting out 24 volts AC current. One of the first things you wanna troubleshoot when you suspect something wrong with the fan center relay is you wanna make sure that we have 24 volts where it should be. And you can also test between R and neutral. So neutral could be the box itself, okay? And if I go to R, you're gonna see well, we don't have that voltage, right? Because this neutral isn't really a great neutral or the ground really isn't a great ground, but eight. Okay, and it doesn't mean there's not anything wrong here, but you always wanna just test nine. You see how as I move my lead, and there's a ground wire right there, a ground screw. If I touch that and go to R, nine. Slightly higher though. Closer I get to the transformer, the more voltage you're gonna have there. But nonetheless, R is our hot side of the secondary transformer. Common is our, kind of like our neutral or our ground, okay? But one of the first things you wanna test when troubleshooting your gas heating system, do I have 24 volts between R and C? If I don't have 24 volts between R and C, you wanna check the underside and you wanna make sure that between L and N or line and neutral that I have 110, 120 volts. If I don't have 120 volts there, stop. You need to stop troubleshooting this. You need to figure out why you don't have voltage incoming to our control. If you have voltage here and you don't have voltage there, you have a defective transformer, right? And regardless of what, what caused the failure of the transformer, you're going to need a new transformer. And speaking of dead transformers, based on experience, what I see quite frequently, when you have a dead transformer, chances are it's your low water cutoff, whether it's the RB24 or even a, a simpler safeguard up the air. Don't discredit the low water cutoff. That could be your point of failure or another short. All right, now let's focus our attention on these terminals on top of the transformer. The two most important terminals, of course, is R and C. R, as we spoke about, is 24 volts, and C is common. W, G, and Y also play vital roles, especially G and Y. Now, on this particular Fan center relay, you have the opportunity to look underneath and you can see that underneath W, there's really nothing going on there. It's not connected to anything. W is simply a terminal post. It's just a meetup connection for wires to hang out, but also talk to one another. So if I have two wires connected to W, it's strictly a glorified wire nut that's on a nice piece of board there that's shared with the other guys. All right, let's jump into our terminals. Focusing our attention on R right now, we're primarily gonna see two wires at the R terminal. One wire is going to be R on our thermostat, and the other wire is going to be going to our vent damper. Next to R, we got common. Common is that neutral or ground, as we spoke about. One of those common wires is be going to our gas valve and the other wires be going to our damper. Now our damper is essentially a motor, so we do need 24 volts, R and C, in order for it to operate. We also have a couple other wires there, two other wires, which is gonna be our end switch, we'll talk about in a later video. Moving on to W, just a glorified meeting space or post. What's important though is G. Now, there are gonna be a couple wires on G. Number one, we're gonna have our thermostat. 
while the other wire is going to be going to our safety circuit. Our safety circuit is our rollout switch, our spill switch, our low water cutoff, our vent damper, our finally going to any other safeties and then ending up at the gas valve. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to worry about W, don't have to marry, worry about Y. Focus your attention on R, C, and G. And as long as no knucklehead came in there before you and messed it all up, you'll be good to go. But if you need any further assistance, check out the schematic wiring diagram or email me, mike at mikeypipes.com for some one-on-one -on -one training. So the next time you hear that click, you'll know exactly how it got there and what it does. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, to smash that thumbs up button. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. And the best way you can support the Training Center video, the Training Center channels, the Training Center channels, and the best way you can support the Mikey Pipes HVAC Training YouTube channel and the Training Center is by subscribing. There's no cost or obligation. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be well, God bless, stay safe.